You get a fuel tank that is rusty, crusty, leaky, not leaky, doesn't matter. You get a fuel tank, you need to coat the inside. This is the video. One thing I want to mention is that the POR15 product is a great product. Uh, we've had great luck with it in the past, so we're going to try it on a fuel tank today. They do make a kit. It's the same exact ingredients, the degreaser, the metal prep, and the sealer, and it's for bigger fuel tanks. So this will work on anything. So although we're doing a motorcycle fuel tank today, if you had a car tank, ATV tank, doesn't matter, it'll work. Because what it's doing is it's actually creating, once you've etched the tank, cleaned the tank, and everything else, it's creating a seal on the inside of that tank, so the tank almost has a bladder inside of it. So that fuel never comes in contact with that thin or porous side that's rusty or crusty or whatever. Um, so you can prevent leaks, stop leaks. It'll even seal up some pinholes, so it's pretty cool. Our tank isn't bad as far as crusty. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, this is a fuel tank off our metric bobber build um, that we just finished. We got a whole playlist on our YouTube channel for this bike. Um, customer wanted to take it uh, before we were able to seal it up and the reason why we're going to seal it up is because we had to tap into the side of this tank and do some welding and whatnot to do the sight glass the manual sight glass and a few other spots on it so what that does is it creates this is very 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 thin it creates a rusty layer or it'll want to rust fast around these fittings on the inside of the tank because we've introduced heat and then moisture from condensation when the fuel gets low and what have you so what we want to do is we want to seal the inside of that tank like I said this tank isn't all rusty um, but that's okay. The uh, theory behind it's the same. So step one is drain the gas into our diesel makeshift gas can. So as you can see by our sight glass, we'll drain the gas. We'll get that drained out. Then we're going to rinse it with water. Then we're going to put our degreaser in there with some warm water and degrease it and shake it up before we go ahead and put the metal prep in there. So let me finish getting this drained and we'll go to the next step. All right, it's almost done draining. Uh, probably got a few more minutes there. We'll put a little bit of light compressed air to blow out anything we got. But this is a great time to like the video, subscribe to our channel. It helps us grow and produce more videos. We respect you and enjoy making these videos for people. So keep watching. All right, our tank is now empty. And if you can see in there, there is some flash rust from the tank sitting dry, but really there's nothing scaly. It's hard to see in there, but there is some flash rust. And the reason why I wanna show you in there is because after we're all done, you're gonna see like this, I believe a whitish coating um, on the inside of this tank all the way around and around these fittings. You just, it's a lot of moving and shaking to get this all the sealer in there. So now that it's completely drained out, we're gonna go ahead and give it a rinse before we hit it with the degreaser. All right, we've got our tank empty and stripped down and we, we have a sight glass here for our fuel line. Anything, you want to take your pet cock off, fuel line off, anything, and this is the same with regular tanks, the cap, anything you don't want to come in contact with any of this product. And you can tape up or plug off your ports. Just keep in mind, if the, if the product settles in these areas, they're going to clog your port. So you're going to want to let it run out. Let the extra run out of there so you don't have that issue. So we're going ahead right now, plugging stuff off, and we're going to go and rinse it. All right, we got our ports plugged off. And again, this first step here, all we're doing is now that the tank's been dried out, I left it in the sun. You don't have to do that, but as you see, I'm gonna probably should turn the water on. <laughs> and obviously dispose of your chemicals or gas or anything else properly. The price of fuel these days, you're probably gonna wanna just use your fuel again, I would assume. Um, so all I'm doing right now is a rinse cycle. So I'll go ahead and rinse this out completely, shake it around. Then we're gonna go ahead and put in the uh, basically cleaner degreaser, which is a, the degreaser and some warm water. And then we'll let that, it's like a half an hour process after this. But again, right now, all we're doing is making a mess. No, <laughs> we're rinsing the tank. All right, now that we have our tank thoroughly rinsed out, it's, it's pretty much completely empty, but it's not dry and that's okay. Because the next step is the cleaner degreaser from PUR15, honestly. This is water-based, which is great. Um, you could probably do this with any cleaner degreaser, but we're sticking with the kit because this all comes in one kit. So you have a quart of cleaner degreaser and a quart of warm water. 
They say not to use super hot water because if you had duct tape you were using on this or anything else, you might mess with that. Um, but anyway, you take these and you put them inside the tank. Now, if your tank was really rusty or whatever you had going on in there, this one is not, so we're not doing it. You could throw a piece of an old chain or rocks or uh, BBs or something in there because this next step, when you pour the cleaner degreaser in the water, the warm water in the tank, you're going to shake the can, rotate the can off and on for the next half an hour before you drain it and then rinse it again before you move on to the next step. So we'll go ahead and get the stuff poured in there and start the shaking. All right, we got ourselves a funnel. You do want to protect your painting surfaces. This is a just a cleaner degreaser, so there's nothing on here that would damage the paint yet. Um, neither, obviously, the water's not. And clearly, I didn't plug the hole in the bottom of the tank, so <laughs> stick by. All right, I'll leave it in there because I'm not honest guy, but I didn't plug the petcock on the bottom. I had it open because we just drained the tank of the water, but now that we're doing the cleaner degreaser, we don't want it to drain out as we're doing it. So again, we're going to pour our quart of cleaner degreaser from the POR15 folks into the tank and it should not be leaking out because you need this to work. We're not putting anything in the tank with it such as chains, rocks, BBs, any of the above because our tank is not all crusty inside. We're just doing this as a precautionary thing. We don't have any leaks or anything going on. So in goes the quart of warm water. Then we're going to put the cap on and we're going to start rotating, rolling and shaking this thing. They uh, fairly continuously for the next half an hour, which doesn't that sound like a good time? So this is when you want to have your buddy, your kids, someone over and say, here, grab this tank. And at least it's a small tank we're dealing with. We're not dealing with like a big automotive tank, but just that. We're going to rotate. We're going to roll. We're going to shake because all you're doing is taking off that coating that the gas leaves, that residue. That's essentially all this is doing. The next step when you etch the metal is when, um, when it really starts to break off any of that surface rust because that's what you want to do. And then it's going to be completely dry before we add the sealer. So as you can see, there's a few steps to this thing. This being the cleaning degreasing because we already rinsed it. So let me finish doing this. You don't need to watch me do this for the next half an hour. We'll rinse it out as best we can. Then we're going to move on to the etching. Still shaking and I couldn't find anyone to help me. So we're still shaking. Feels like there's a lot of foam. All right, 30 minutes, 30 minutes has passed. Now we're gonna degrease, well, we're gonna drain the degreaser now. And being good to our environment, even though it is water soluble, and I believe it's biodegradable, but don't hold me to that. We're gonna go ahead and drain this and get rid of it properly at the town. Um, so follow those rules with you. how do you get rid of your uh, waste and see what comes out of here as far as grossness goes. But honestly, there's really nothing gross coming out of here, which I didn't expect it to because this thing was in pretty good shape, but that's fine. We're going through the process to clean this tank out. Um, so now that we get this thing draining, we'll finish draining it off. Once it's completely drained, we're gonna go ahead and, I gotta get another container. Um, start the rinsing and then the edging process. So let me finish draining this off. We'll rinse it out. All right, we drained our tank from the degreaser. We went ahead and rinsed our tank well. It's completely empty, however, it's not dry. And that's okay, it does not have to be dry for the next step. Right here is our metal prep. So now we're gonna shake this up. We're gonna pour the entire container inside of here. Make sure your ports are plugged and you don't wanna get this on the tank. So if you need to protect it, protect it. Use a funnel, do whatever you gotta do. Um, we are using a funnel. So we're gonna go ahead and shake this up, pour it in the tank. Then you're gonna go ahead and roll the tank around like we did before, and to the point where it's coating all surfaces. And what they say in the directions here um, is to rotate the tank every half an hour. So you let it sit on one side for a half an hour, like down over here, then flip it, let it sit on the other side, then the top, then the bottom. So probably a couple of hours from now, we'll be draining this out, and I expect it to look probably orangey rusty, and um, then rinsing it a final time. At that point, we dry it before the next step. So we'll go ahead and pour this in, then we're going to roll her around and then let it sit on each side for approximately half an hour to make sure we've got all surfaces coated well. So in it goes. And when our magic happens is, is when you empty this out and rinse it out and dry it. And you're going to see how we sh I showed you before it was kind of that surface rust inside. I bet it's all gone after this. So we got the, this all in there. We're gonna go ahead and cap it off. You can tape it off, whatever you gotta do. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and roll around. All right, several hours later, 
This thing's been swished, it's been swirled, it's been rotated. Now this is our uh, our prep, surface prep. So we've de we've rinsed it, we've degreased it. Now we're on to the third step, which is the, um, basically kind of like an acid edge. Um, and we rotated it every half an hour-ish. So every side of the tank has been coated, it's been covered, just sloshing around a little bit more. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and we're gonna drain this off. And this stuff, I expect to see a little orange tint to it, but maybe not. Again, if your tank was pretty bad, it definitely would be. Eh, yeah, she's dirty. I wouldn't say orange. Like, we weren't dealing with as much rust as some of you folks might with your projects, but... Um, that's about it. So, the next step, once you finish draining this, I gotta get another container again. Um, is going to be rinse the tank thoroughly with warm water. So, we finished draining this, we're gonna rinse it thoroughly with warm water being our next step. Sorry for the camera wiggling. Um, plugging this off, sh shaking it around, warm water. Then we're gonna wanna dry it. Oh, here's a better look at the, uh, no, that went in clear. So, pretty dirty. Um, I'm gonna get a look inside of this thing here in a second so I can show you what the inside looks like. All right, we're looking at the tank. It's really hard to tell. I can't really get a light in this thing. But as you can see, that was all like brown rust. It's all bare metal now. Now, what's gonna happen is that's gonna want to flash rust real fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this rinsed off with warm water, drain it as best we can. We're gonna open up the, the vents and the valves. We're gonna put a little bit of compressed air in here, or it could be a heat gun, could be a blow dryer, and dry this tank out. Because once it's dry, we can go on to the last step. So, rinse with warm water, dry it out. All right, the tank's been rinsed out several times now, so now we're just running pure water through it um, to clean it out. Um, I've got all the water out of it. I've got the vents open again. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of light compressed air. Um, and the point of doing this is just to uh, dry your tank up with the vents and stuff open. So, like you see, you see a little bit of water splattering out of there. That's what you want. Just get the majority of it out. And then you want to dry it real well. And then you can dry it, use a hair dryer or a heat gun. You don't want to do it all with the compressed air. And I'm not hammering this thing down, putting too much air in it, by any means. But uh, put it in the sun, get it warm, let it dry out so we can move on to the next step. But you want to make sure, after doing this, that it's dry. So it's key now to have this dry. So as soon as this dries up, we'll go to the last step. All right, everyone, the time is now. The tank has dried, it's completely dried. I went ahead and plugged off my ports again. I did leave the fittings in the tank because I wanted to seal around like where the fitting meets into the tank and, be, and, and uh, form a bond. And what I'll do last after we coat the entire inside is to take this out and let any bit, little bit drip out so it doesn't pool and clog up our sight glass here. But as you can see, it's dried now. And it's a pretty much bare metal, it's a merely minimal flash rust. Um, but it took a little bit to dry. It definitely took a little while to dry. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to mix up the sealer. Let me bring it over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is what forms that, that bond or that sealer. It's fuel tank sealer. It's literally going to be like a, I believe it's a whitish coating. Um, you pour the entire thing after you stir it up real good into the tank and then you slowly rotate the tank. So you're coating the entire inside of the tank slowly. You don't want it to puddle up and sit. So after you've coated the whole thing, you want to drain off the excess. Then what I just read in the directions, honestly, because I wasn't sure about it, I'm like, well, how long do we gotta wait before we put fuel in it? It's actually four days, uh, which is a lot longer than I thought. Um, it's gonna be real hot this weekend, so I'll probably put it out in the sun starting tomorrow. Um, but that's, hey, four days is four days. So we will do what the directions say and give it its four days. So I want to get this stuff in the tank now rotate it around and get it all coated up all right so this is our sealer and i grabbed a screwdriver that's way too big the end's perfect. so we'll just use our snap on as a pry bar because that's the way to do it right no um you want to be really careful pouring this in though because this stuff is permanent so be very careful around your painted surfaces you get any on it wipe it off immediately um oh my yeah, there's like a gasket in the, the cap. Well, anyway, that's what it looks like. And they tell you to stir it until you get a uniform color. And I feel like the color said it was, uh, painted surfaces, slowly. 
Uh, I didn't say the color, I just said uniform color. I was thinking it was white, but it looks like it's going to be silver, which is cool. It'll look like metal. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this up quite a bit, and then we'll get it poured in our tank. It's a little more liquidy than I expected it to be. Um, but again, I trust these guys. POR15, we've had no problems with it. The stuff is great. Pretty much looks like silver is going to be the color. Jeez, it looks like automotive paint. That's pretty freaking cool. Um, we almost got it all mixed up, and we're getting ready to pour it in now. And even if I ruin the funnel, I feel better about ruining a funnel than getting it on the paint. So, because of that, we're going to be real careful and pour it into the tank. Now, remember, you've plugged off all your ports, so you're not getting it. Oh, I'm going to fix the camera. Sorry, guys. You plugged off all your ports, so you're not, it's not draining out on you as you're pouring it in. And that is all of it. It says to pour entire context, contents in the can. Whatever's left in there, a little drizzle, you can just let it um, dry out. It'll harden up. So we've got our funnel. It's all in there. Let that drip for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and put our fuel cap back on. Then we're going to do what they said. We're going to rotate this thing around slowly and see if we can't get this thing coated. And this is the side that we really want to focus on because it is where we did some welding. So around those fittings, we want a real good seal and prevent any type of rust from adhering. And again, it's going to want to go down to the low spots and the petcocks and everything else. But you just got to keep doing this, rotating it around slowly. So you're coating the top, the bottom, the sides, everything. Um, and it's not a matter of shaking it or going fast because there's not that much in there. It is more liquidy than I thought, which is pretty cool um, because it should flow better. Now, just to get an idea, let's see if we even touched the surface up here. Well, I got you on the camera. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So... We are making some headway. You can see in there it's starting to coat. So we're gonna continue to rotate this around because it is puddling and drying, so it is working. I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and get this thing all rotated out for, I don't know, five minutes worth of rotating. Then we'll drain off the All right, update. We've been rotating this for about five minutes and as you can see, we've got a nice uniform coating in there. Everything is all silver. Beautiful. So what we're going to do is um, now that we've got it coated and rotated, I mean, you want to be thorough with this. This is important. Large tank, same difference. It, it, it's the same thing. It's just a bigger scale and there's more product. Um, you want to take your low spot and drain off any excess. So what we'll do is we'll pull that out and put the can back under there and let any excess drain off. And then we can let this thing sit for four days. So I'm not going to sit here with a time lapse for four days. But um, maybe in the morning, after it sits for like 12 hours or so, I'll do a uh, quick little video, see what it looks like when it's drying, and maybe touch it. And then uh, we'll update as we go. All right, just to show you, we've got a coating all the way into those um, where our sight glass is. So to make sure these aren't clogged, I'm going to put a tiny bit of compressed air through here and here just to keep the ports open. And as you can see, a little bit has dripped back out, not much. So we'll go ahead and let this thing cure overnight and see what it looks like in the morning. All right, it's been overnight now, so it is definitely dried up and we have a nice little coating on there as well now, which is great. Um, and it is dry. Like I stick my finger down there ugh, and touch the tank itself and it's dry. It's not tacky. It's not anything. And I put this down here in the low spot. So we did have a little bit run back out and it dried up hard as a rock. I blew through these lightly so we could keep these vents open. Um, and now the four day wait period. Is, is on so we're almost to day one now as far as it's sitting i'm going to go ahead and put the petcock back on and the sight glass back on and back on the bike i'm um, just so i can get the bike out of the way and then uh, we let it sit four days and it's good to go so i hope this video helped you out a little bit as far as uh do i use this tank coating to save this tank it'll even seal out pinholes like if you had an active leak in your tank and you wanted to save it versus getting a new tank or rebuilding a whole tank this is the way to go um it's not it's not that hard to use. It's a long multi-step process, but to be honest with you, it wasn't hard. It's just, you gotta, you gotta take the time. And honestly, I wasn't aware of the four day window to let it cure, um, but that's okay. We'll give it its four days. We'll fill the tank and we're good to go. 
Again, we did this as a preventative maintenance because we did some welding on the tank and we didn't want premature rust to go on. So we just sealed it right away. Um, but other people, you got rusty, nasty tanks. This is the thing to do. And we use the POR15 product, their kit, but there's many other kits out there that do essentially the same thing. I know Eastwood has one. Um, there's a lot of kits out there. So I'm sure they're all pretty decent. I just went with something reputable that I know works well with their products. So thanks for watching. I hope it helped you out. Flip and customize. Thanks, guys.